Hello guys, welcome back to another day, another episode of our Quick Dive. And in this week, we're just going to talk about one thing, but one very big thing, and that is the five new digital banks that we have. And as a disclaimer, we do own some of the stocks mentioned in this video. So we're recording this on the first day of Raya. So Salam Ideal Fitri to all our Muslim listeners. Hopefully you get a good break. You know, first time going back after two years. Uh, we do have something interesting coming up in two weeks. Uh, it is actually our Project Small episode six. It will be held on the 12th of May. The early bird is still available till the 5th of May and we'll be covering Delium, 7-Eleven and Optimax. So do check out the links in the comment section and I hope to see you on the 12th. All right, John, big news, big news. Uh, Bank Negara has uh, true 29 different applicants decided that five will be successful, right? Mm -hmm. By giving them digital banking license. Now, who are the five guys? So you've got Boost, Grab, and C or Shopee, mm -hmm. right? And on the on the Islamic side, you have Aeon and Kaf Investment Bank. So there's a interesting mix of old and new wealth. Yeah. So... Speaking of the old business model, I know you have something interesting to share, right? Yeah, I think we have to look at the incumbents first to realize the difference in between um, why is it difficult to start a bank uh, and the requirements of it. Then we compare that with uh, the digital bank licenses that have just been dished out. Yep. So if you were to start a bank, let's just say you and I <laughs> were to start a bank, uh, your minimum capital <coughs> requirements would have been, capital funds would have uh, uh, been needed to be 2 billion. Yeah. And then if you're a foreign owned banking institution, you need to have 300 million. So you guys, you've got the guys like, let's just say Stan Chart or whatever coming here. Uh, this, these were the requirements for you to set up a traditional bank. Yeah. So 2 billion is uh, no small pocket change though. <laughs> I mean, that's also based on the Basel 1 and 2 requirements. Correct. Right? On top of this is, this is uh, before the even Basel 1 and mm. 2, right? So for the digital banks, right, where we are right now, if we look at the framework that uh, the digital licensing framework, right, this is where we are. You see this, this thing in red, yep, the yep. grant of license, they're actually given three to five years. Uh, yep, correct. To actually get everything up and running. And during this period, right, um, the need for capital funds is only 100 million. So mm. it's, it's quite significantly <laughs> lower than that of a traditional bank. You know that, That's the point I'm trying to make. So that's understand right. incumbent, this is the high barriers to entry. What they're trying to do is lower the barriers to entry. And this is, uh, this is the lower barriers to entry. And more importantly is this, when we say capital funds, right? What, what do we mean by capital funds? It's actually, uh, it may, it's made out of paid up ordinary shares, preference shares, ICOs, retained earnings and other disclosed reserves. That's right. Okay. So, if we look at all these um, traditional requirements that we uh, we needed to, right? It's really like the big boys game. I think what they're trying to say is now we lower the barriers to entry. You guys are more tech savvy. Uh, you should be able to serve a little bit more of the unbanked or yep. underbanked. <clears throat> underserved, they uh, bank I use the word underserved. Underserved, yep. And from there, then the uh, services, right? This, this is something very interesting that I heard from um, the CEO of uh, Exiata Digital Services and actually RHB, uh, right. the, the strategist, they said, right, they, 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 even they, RHB, are aware that there are certain customers today, the RHB customers, that they can't acquire based on their cost. Yeah. So I think this is something that the digital banks are trying to, you know, uh, alleviate, you know. The, the traditional banks themselves want to go after them, but they can't. Yeah. Now, if we look at, this is this is the first requirement, capital funds. The second requirement was this, that they have to ensure that the total asset size does not exceed 3 billion within the years of them operating, right? And I just went to dig how big are the asset size of the incumbents, right? If you look at it, right? 3 billion. Uh, yeah, the smallest one is really. <laughs> four. So it's, in terms of, I think <clears throat> there's a question which we'll answer in more detail later about how is it threatening the incumbents yeah. Uh, I think you have to be 800, no, three, you're pr probably how many times larger? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think this may be a problem. And yeah. 3 billion is quite easy to reach. Yeah. And, but 
I also understand that they need the three million because you can accumulate assets. Correct. Um, and all these assets are usually liabilities because for banks, liabilities are very big. Right? Yes. A bigger chunk of the assets. Um, but I think a, a better one would be to include things like the earning power that they generate. Correct. And that's, I guess, where the five-year sustainability business model thing. Correct, comes in. correct. Yes, because correct. asset in, in a traditional sense, right, the mm-hmm. risk the risk assessment as we know it today yep, yep. has to change in digital banking. I mean, yeah, yeah, for sure. you look at how how uh, credit worthiness and all is done today, it's, it's actually uh, not very applicable once you come to, uh, to that of uh, digital banking and how they, and I'm going to talk about it later, uh, the utopia yeah. of how digital banks is going to be. Like. Yeah. Yeah. So you were saying about the underserved. Yeah. And so the whole idea, <coughs> sorry, the whole idea for Bank Nagara is really to, it's more not to like revitalize the economy or something. It's more really to include more people. So there's this interesting uh, idea, right? That uh, especially if you're in the crypto scene or in the digital payment scene, right? There's this talk about serving the unbanked. So these are just people who uh, don't have bank accounts. Mm-hmm. So that's not really a problem in Malaysia. So mm-hmm. you might think, well, yeah, we're quite digitally savvy. Yeah. But what Bank Nagara is trying to do, from what I understand, is they're trying to address the underserved. And what they mean by underserved is usually people who don't have access to information and products, financial in nature. So for example, uh, you know, depending on how the digital banking license people will use their platform, could be in the, <clears throat> the future they get, you know, the right unit trust, or the right insurance, payments, the cheapest payments available, maybe even remittances, who knows, right? Yeah. So that's really what Bank Nagara is trying to do lah, that right. in terms of the objective. Yeah, the other part uh, which I'll add on uh, yeah. is actually uh, SMEs. Because that's true. there's a lot of uh, micro SMEs, I think. Lending, right? Lending, lending service, micro lending yeah. services, because let's just say like uh, people like our crew, right? Yeah. Um, they don't have a permanent pay slip. Yeah, that's right. right. They, they are freelancers to us in a way. They are the independent business owners. Yep, yep. And in terms of credit worthiness scores and all that, if you go to through a traditional banking mean, right, they would not be able to be granted as much credit as they would want. Correct, correct. Similarly, if someone just started a food business during COVID, right? How are you gonna give a pay slip to a bank like uh, the Machit Lemak <laughs> who Yo, sells, you know, exactly. who comes up with a killer recipe? Exactly. Right. Exactly. What what they probably have is a buku tiga lima, and then you're gonna go to the bank with a buku tiga lima and says, "This is how I manage my cash flow." Right. Yeah. That's something that I think uh, is either maybe they fall into the category of on bank or underserved. And yeah. This is where credit uh, analysis are uh, right yeah. on on. I mean the big advantage is the fact that uh, now you can understand in theory your customers a lot better. Yeah. So that's why it gets interesting where take for example, uh, Axeta and RHB. RHB I can know through your credit statement mm. and Axeta I can know through your phone bills and things like that. Yeah. One one interesting thing I found out also was that they did a study in Germany. Uh, if you log on and your social media behavior and mm. based on the phone that there you, you have, yeah. right? If you are iPhone user, iOS login, right? You are less likely to default compared to an Android. I found that really, really interesting. Ah. Yeah, so I, I I couldn't include it here because it was a long report, 120 over pages. But yeah. the essence I picked up was social media behavior, utility bills, payment. There you go. Yeah. Uh, uh, the friends in your social media, they actually do that, which is pretty scary. So yeah. what they tried to do was open data, meaning it's not so much private data, open data and try to come up with a behavior yeah, exactly. pattern. Yeah, yeah and, exactly. and if you understand uh, Facebook uh, ads, right? Mm. You know, the, the the one thing that, I mean, Facebook's awesome because you know, you can see like your friends you follow yes. and all that, and they can pump you ads and give you suggestions for products, which Correct. is what these guys can do as well. Correct. But the big difference is that Facebook don't have access to your spending habits mm. per se. They know how, they, they at best they know what kind of products you're interested in based on the number of clicks, based on the number of interaction or engagement. Mm. But on this level, it's literally, I know you will pay for this because I can literally see it in your credit card. Correct, statement. correct, correct. So um, it's it's a good, it's a good move by Bank Negara, uh, but I'll share more about the global competitors after yes. the break.
So if you want to have financial data at your fingertips, look no further. Ticker, cloud-based, global data. Best part, you can, you can even have access to portfolios of uh, great investors, people like Warren Buffett, people like Bill Miller at your fingertips. So look no further. The sign up is in the comment section below. Okay, so let's look about look at you know globally, uh, right? And uh, you know, I believe I was reading up on the digital banking framework, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and a lot of it is based as no surprise uh, on Singapore. Yeah, right? yeah. So yeah, you know, what's your gauge on uh, the gl globally? What what surprised you about when you you looked at the actually Singapore data? is also quite nascent. If yeah, you just yeah. look at it, it's quite nascent. What surprised me really was that. Uh, China wasn't too, too surprised for me because mm -hmm. it was because of uh, We Bank, which I'll talk about later. Yeah. But Germany, Germany is considered in a way Europe's probably Europe is the mo is the most leading uh, nation economically. But yeah. you know, being so advanced, you know, categorized as advanced, that was where you look at it. More than fifteen neo banks and challenger banks are operating in Germany. So crazy that means competition. yeah, it's crazy competition. Uh, I think uh, what was interesting was Brazil because of New Bank. Mm -hmm. yep, uh, this yep, is yep. where Berkshire has a quite a big stake that's as well. Right, that's right. Um, South Africa is actually maturing on the nascent, okay? Which is more <laughs> South Africa is actually more advanced than Singapore, and also, so you see, I think when we look at data sets, let's let's not be biased and says oh, we make assumptions that yeah. advanced economies are you know opening up faster than that, but. Sometimes because they have a, I would say because they have a blank canvas. Yeah. Like for example, China, uh, I was reading uh, Alibaba's struggle was that uh, payments wise and everything, they were lacking in terms of infrastructure, but it was a blessing in disguise because they completely skipped the credit card revolution. Yep. <clears throat> Is that a whole 4G skip to yes, 5G correct. same concept, right? Exactly, exactly. So they, so because of that, they, uh, the analogy I would like to paint is once you have a blank canvas, Exactly you can do things rather than legacy and then you got to marry the legacy and it's a little more a little bit more cumbersome and and was one of the reasons why singapore and you know malaysia is somewhat behind is because the way singapore works is that they'll look at the entire nation the entire world and then they see what works then they copy it correct then malaysia will look at singapore and say <laughs> what does singapore what is singapore doing and then we copy it yeah so that's how roughly like it works that's yeah. why we are a bit behind work smarter la. but i think in in due time we will be uh in terms of maturing or even advanced areas when yes. it comes to banking la. correct that's what I believe. correct i think the advantage that malaysia has is our digital adoption is very very high actually yeah yeah, yeah that's right that's yeah right. yeah um what i want to talk about next is actually this this uh something very, very successful called yep. WeBank, uh, yep. obviously owned by Tencent. Remember we talked about the underserved and underbank, right? That's right. So for WeBank, 75% of their customers are actually blue collar workers. Right. So these are the these are the people where uh, the traditional banking system, even in China is underserving them. There's actually a lot more stats. Uh, actually, he came to Malaysia to present during the Global FinTech Week, I think in 2019. Um, yep, yep. He was down here to also launch the opening of the office, right? In, yes, uh, that's right. Bangsa South. In, in Bangsa yeah. South, correct. But he gave a lot of interesting stats because he said, you, you look at this, right? Average size of the loan is actually 8,100. 5K. Yep. 5K. Duration about 50 days. 72% of these loans carry an interest amount of less than 100. Mm, MMP, okay. Which is like 50, okay? And how is it done? Why why they can do this at such rapid pace is that they they, they call this thing ABCD. Mm, okay. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go through that because it's another rabbit hole. <laughs> but 50% of their staff is actually in the IT department, which in the traditional banks like JP Morgan and all these guys, even Malaysia, probably only one third or even less, a quarter yeah. of their staff That's actually right. works in That's IT. Right. So it's the reverse. And because of that, that's why their technology operating cost per account is only 3.6 RMB compared to a Chinese traditional bank, 20 to 100. So yeah, it's virtually yeah. how many times? Four times, even to the lowest, it's five times cheaper. You know? Absolutely. And because of that, the deployment, I think the utopia is that, can you imagine getting uh, a loan approved in 15 minutes? That's the goal, right? That's the goal. Credit card approval in a day. Yeah, yeah. So. Right now is the day. Can you imagine it can be done within an hour? You know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so... Obviously, there's there's risk, and I think that's where that's where the algorithm, IT, uh, digital adoption can actually help. Di uh, consumer digital footprints can actually help. Yep. Yeah. Key. So, so, so I mean, the the key thing now we go into okay. Look, uh, 
we know what advantages that you know the utopia of digital banking yeah. will will bring to Malaysia or globally. Yeah. And the question is for us as investors, right? Now that we uh, have this, uh, really, we call it a new asset class, somewhat of a new asset class, mm. like a, a banking 2.0, let's call it. Yeah. Um, how do we actually determine what is good, what's a good digital bank, what is not a good digital mm. bank? And it's not easy because it's early days. Correct. Right, look, even Bank Nagara is saying, hey, what's the sustainability, right? Yeah. They even have an exit, uh, talking about exit early strategy. Yeah, exactly. that's exit, yeah. Exit like after five years, if you're, if you're crap, you know, like, yeah. you know, time to, time to, you know, they yeah. might revoke your license. Correct. Right? Okay. So um, we'll discuss that in the next segment, but this is just really the applicants, I believe, the mm -hmm. contenders. Mm. The I don't know if all 29 are here, but certainly most of them are. Yeah. Uh, you know, touch and go. Actually, the most interesting one is that touch and go decided to pull, pull out. out. So it's worth studying, you know, why that is the case. But yeah. anyway, yeah, I just want to show you guys here. This you know, is Petronas exactly, was there. I didn't know that. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about this in the next segment about what, what, what works and what doesn't. If you are enjoying the video so far, remember to give it a like, comment, subscribe, click on the bell so that whenever new videos come out, you'll be notified. So, okay. MJ, yes. assessment criteria, take us through. Yes, so no, actually, I will not take us through because oh. you guys can read yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty but long, right? It's, it's, very, it's very long, yeah. so that's what... Uh, okay, so anyway, uh, I think this segment is about uh, what is a good digital bank and what's not. And uh, again, this is early days, so... Um, I think globally we only have WeChat as an example. We bank, we bank, yeah. or yeah, and and they all link, and you know how to analyze again. China is just one beast by itself, so yeah. we don't know how the rest of the world will behave. Mm. But anyway, the first important thing about a digital bank is that you you, you ought to qualify for it, now, right? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> the assessment criteria is here. This is listed by Bank Gara. They have four over overview or general assessments, right? So prudential, right? Basically, uh, how uh, sound, right? Your business plan is. Secondly, is your tech, whether you can support these plans. Mm. That is financial inclusion. So this is probably the CSR part or the uh, you know, part for the nation, making sure it's on board. Mm. The underserved and the last one, of course, it's kind of linked to the, the third one is the best interest in Malaysia because if you are a banking or financial institution, you can do a lot of damage. Correct, right? correct. So that's really important. So I think there are five key things that you you will need uh, and do chip in after I give my thoughts. Sure. The first is pro proactive customer analytics. So data by itself doesn't tell you, uh, like you have to actually interpret the data when you get it from different, different people, right? Mm -hmm. And so why this is important is because here's the thing, even among the five different uh, banks, what you're going to face is, okay, how do you differentiate, right? Because money is a commodity, digital, money is a commodity. So what is the difference between any of these five banks? And the big one is how they use their customer analytics mm. and eventually how do they push products in a way that really suits and then fit whatever bank Gara says, plus also uh, things that are profitable. Yeah. So that's, that's the number one key. The second one is uh, they need to have good partnerships and niches. So mm. partnerships would be like what uh, Axiata is doing with Boost. Uh, boost or uh, Grab. Yeah, Boost, sorry, Boost with RHB. Correct. Yeah. So uh, they should build on more partnerships like that in the future to yeah. strengthen, to enlarge the customer base. Correct. That's the key. Correct. So the more customer you get, the more different types of analytics you can get. Yeah. Presumably, you can have better solutions. Your sampling size is big enough. La. Exactly. And the next one I would say is, is linked to that is niche, right? Yeah. Uh, if, again, this is what I would prefer, yeah. which is, if let's say you are a uh, uh, a platform that has a digital banking license, um, one good thing I would say is that, hey, you know, if you say this is the place where the best loans you can get for tech equipment, for example. Is she in the traditional banking space that already exists, you know? Exactly. Kind, kind of like, so Maybank, CMB, you have a niche for, let's say, home loans or whatever, HSBC exactly. home loans. Then RHB is more Public for- Public bank, yeah. yeah. Uh, RHB is more for a uh, higher purchase. CIMB color. is in investment banking, yes, things like that. Yes. So exactly that, what, that's what I need to do. Yeah. So the banks in the past, they can't really do this because they don't have that kind of like very individualized data. Mm. Now with the kind of platforms that are on the digital banking license, they can go down to the level. So imagine, now how this helps is that, let's say this is the platform right, mm. for you to borrow money to buy equipment. 
Then next time, if anyone wants to run ads on your platforms, yeah, you can do that already, right? Correct. Correct. So then you can provide all these good, uh, good uh, uh, options for your customers. Mm. Next one, I think that's straightforward. UI UX. It should be easy to use. Yeah. It should be fast. Sign up process should be seamless, Correct. easy. Correct. Uh, and of course, this leads leads to app stickiness. Mm. That's the key. Mm. And the last bit, and I would say this is uh, the Actually, most underrated, uh, mm. I would say, mm. is risk management, right? You need to be accurate with your analytics. And the faster you can accumulate your asset base to hit that 3 billion limit, yeah. the better, because then now your cost of funding will lower. Correct. And so your cost per employee is going to go down and then your revenue or profit per customer is going to go up. Yeah. So these are the five. There's probably more, but yeah. Yeah, I think uh, probably I'll add on a few. One yeah. is actually because of the partnerships that you saw that won the exactly. license, right? I think one thing that as, as investors we should look at is actually integration of culture. Oh, so yeah. you, so oh, you've yeah. got a traditional banking guy with, and, uh, and let's just say um, a guy who is like digital first. So if you look at how... Um, these two guys will work together to provide, let's say, credit worthiness and all that. The thinking process is one guy, if you bring the risk guy from a bank, <laughs> you bring a, a new risk guy That's from right. a business, uh, how will they blend? I'm not saying that they won't, or, but I think it would be a clash of cultures. Yeah, They need to sort it out. Second thing I would add is actually in terms of um, what I see missing today is that a lot of these digital products that are, oh, sorry, financial products are not being partnered together. So like, for example, I don't see insurance companies partnering up with these banks. Uh, there you go. So that, that's something already for me missing. You don't see unit trust companies partnering. There you go, exactly. So, so CAF may be a good one. Yeah. CAF is an asset management. So partnering up with, uh, who did CAF partner? I can't remember. I think it's CAF by itself. I'm CAF by itself, yeah. Okay, so CAF, but then you don't have uh, 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 the inclusion of a bank in that partnership. So again, I think, while we have good partnerships, you know, old and, and, and new, the traditional bank and all that, but I think if you really want it to be uh, all inclusive, I think that's something that's still missing that I see lah, from my point of view. Yes, yeah. exactly. So that's yeah. why you need to analyze things. You need to get it right on the demand side of things. Correct. Which is your revenue. Like how do you generate revenue? Correct. How do you create a uh, sustainable banking business model, right? Mm. One of the best ones is public bank. Yeah. Because... Um, I didn't quite add here. What you need to do as investors is to look back at the partners mm. and do they, of course the past is not always indicative of the future, but do they have a history, right? Mm. Of surviving the bad times. And then I think that's the biggest question yes, because yes. Grab, uh, to my knowledge, they've not faced anything very difficult as, as a company, right? Uh, uh, except for share price dropping. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 that's probably, yeah, that's somewhat true actually. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that that's one. Yeah. Um, has Axiata have a history of struggling? Mm, Carve Investment Bank? I think Boost, yes, uh, because it, in terms of wallet adoption, it's not, yeah. it's not as, you know, as big as uh, Grab or Touch yeah. & Go. Yeah. Aeon, yeah. you know. So, uh, b the reason is because we, we, ironically, we have to look at the traditional banks. Mm to see what succeeded because we tend to focus on the things that are changing all the time, yes. which is like the tag, yes. the, the, the way, or how can we speed up sign, sign up process or that. But the core essence of a bank, right, is to generate returns with the lowest amount per unit risk. That's Correct. the whole idea. So, yes. so what like public bank, right, was really good at is they focused on mainly Chinese. Yes. And uh, in terms of demographic, then in terms of the uh, things like what they loan to. So they always had collateral. The, the, the collateralized asset quality. I Correct. Think that's the, the, the exactly. Thing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, and then they, they, they control costs like Matt. And that's why they are the probably the best <laughs> bank in You remember in the joke I told you or not, uh, uh, MJ? I went to a public bank. Uh, yeah. uh, so I'm a customer of both CMB, Maybank, and yeah. public bank, right? You go to CMB, you look at the counter, very posh. Uh, I'm talking about probably 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, flat screen LCDs or whatever, right? You go to public bank, you go to the loans office, you still see CRT monitors, you know. So stacks of paper. Stacks yeah, of right. paper, office that is not, you know, elegant. Yeah. It's the 1980s, 1990s kind of office view. They said, okay. Yeah. 
It's not comfortable to the customer, but as an investor, as a shareholder, my God, talk about how they control costs. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> right? So uh, now, th- here's the interesting question. Yeah. One I don't have an answer to is, yeah. given that I would assume a lot of these loans that they're going to have are small tickets and yeah. they're not going to have collateral. Yes. So there's got to be a new way to create some sort of collateral in that sense to manage the risk. Yes. How that's going to be, who knows, right? Yes. Is it targeting a specific segment of people because they have higher income or is it targeting things that are very basic like food? So maybe Grab can be the masters of, you know, loaning, taking money for food, <laughs> credit for food. Oh gosh, come the yeah. day when they have to pay a hundred ringgit meal in, in installments, I'm a bit worried though, MJ. <laughs> but, but if you think about it, yeah. that's how they can then increase their asset base exponentially and mm. then lower their cost of funding. Yes. And they already have the platform, something that maybe Shopee has to, to a much lesser Extent. degree. Yeah. So it's a very interesting uh, thing. You know, we will definitely talk about this in and the future. Correct. But do you have anything to add before we move on to no, the question? No, I think uh, more importantly is this, uh, it's still early days, like what you said. Exactly. Um, I think the rules are still being changed. Uh, rules of the game, put it this way, rules of the game. And I think even the central banks themselves are learning because yeah. um, like what, we bank actually did. They actually pioneered kind of like the standard for credit worthiness for what China is doing. Mm. And the beauty about not being a pioneer is that um, you can actually copy. Exactly. And it may not be lock, stock and barrel because the Chinese themselves has different cultural nuances and all that. But again, uh, 80%, 90% of the work is done for you already. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. So question of the week by Mr. VK. Tiger, also mm. related to digital banking. So he asked, any impact on traditional banks now that digital banks are here? As we mentioned earlier on, the first impact is that there is no impact because mm. the smallest bank at number 21 already has 4 billion of assets and these incumbents can only, uh, sorry, these uh, new uh, guys can only go up to 3 billion in assets. So. Um, that really kind of caps the potential, unfortunately. Mm. Um, but it also makes sense because a lot of these uh, digital banks will be serving the products, right, that are not big. in Small nature. ticket items. Huh? Exactly, right. Not your car, uh, not your housing. But mm. of course, if it works in five years, maybe they will actually open that up. Another thing I would say is that uh, now, this will spur banks on to be more competitive mm. because in a way, Bank Nagara has just allowed them to say, okay, good, these guys, you know, they are hungry people, right? Grab, Shopee and all that. If we didn't put the caps, right, you guys won't be where you are. Yeah. So you guys better back up and, uh, or maybe in the future, consider acquiring some of these banks, especially if the business model already works. But what are your thoughts? I think uh, competition is good. I mean, um, I was reading an article on Fortune, it was quite interesting. Volkswagen CEO was so happy Tesla Giga factory actually opened in Berlin. And the reason why he was happy was because it spurred him. He was actually f- uh, fighting the board to liberalize, to, to innovate the company. And you know, it's like when you get to the size of Volkswagen, right? It's yeah. like, it's very hard to move. And I think if I use the same analogy here, the incumbents here may be comfortable, maybe uh, that's why uh, when there is an entrenched uh, incumbent, right? What will happen? Normally, mm. services plateau uh, or stagnant service uh, standards don't improve and it gets yep, stagnant, yep. right? But once you have competition, it, it it spurs the incumbents to say, hey, these guys are doing this at a fraction of our cost. Yeah. Then he will start, the CEO will start knocking on the, 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 the individual departments. Hey, how come this guy can do it like one quarter of your cost, you can't do it. So I think competition is always good both for the customer and both for the incumbents because it those that cannot thrive, uh, they will just die a natural death. And I think since the 97 crisis, banks in Malaysia has already consolidated to where they are. Uh, Now it's the next, you know, they've hit a plateau. Now it's the next push that can they lower their cost to be competitive that even today, can we actually grow out of our time? Because you see what WeBank has done for China is what, yes, they have a very big advantage because of a sizable population. But if the model is done right, and you manage to get the tag, manage to get the packaging, everything right. What's stopping the Malaysian banks from going regional? I think the only guy that was very, um, what do you call it, uh, loud about the ambition was CIMB. Yeah. Maybank wasn't that loud in their regional expansion, yeah. you see. So, but because of that, 
CMB had to go through a lot of hurdles because all this regulation, local regulation in each country. Now with the digital banking product, I, I hope that actually it yeah. will liberalize the market even more. And it's like, you don't have to be geograph geographically confined yeah. to run your business. Uh. But, but of course, the challenge is that, uh, you know, it's a lot easier to export products rather than services. Correct, right? definitely. There's a, there's a, you know, like Apple can be, you know, exported very easily, but Correct. you can't really export your hospitals. No, but there's no not. international hospital. That's right. That that's right. Yeah. And so that's that has always been the challenge. And of course, I think we mentioned last week. You know, uh, you know the, the the ASEAN or C region, right? Yes. There's so many different languages and cultures. Languages so, barrier, culture barrier. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's always going to be a challenge. But yeah, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, there's a lot of things we couldn't include here because it'd be too long, right? But if you enjoyed the video, definitely, you know, share it with your friends, followers on our socials, and we'll see you in the next video.